Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be looking at half frame format film cameras or film cameras which have the ability to shoot the half frame of their film type. So if you've been following my channel, I've been shooting recently with this camera here, the Olympus Pen F, which is a 35mm half frame film camera. And what I mean by half frame is that a normal 35 millimeter negative is 24 by 36 millimeter in size. So this camera manages to fit two 24 by 18 millimeter frames inside each normal 35 millimeter exposure. So that's how this becomes a half frame. 35 millimeter film camera and then my last rolls that I've shot is using this camera here which is a medium format folding camera the Seagull 203 and this shoots 6x6 and 6x4.5 inch frames and that latter size the 6x4.5 inch is actually the half frame equivalent of 120 film because it's full frame equivalent is six by nine. So just for a bit of fun, nothing scientific, I've been out with both of these cameras and I've been taking at the same time similar kinds of exposures, hopefully using same light and similar exposure settings in terms of the aperture or the shutter speed that I choose to use for my composition. There are a couple of peculiarities and I'll talk about those when we get to them, but it's just a little bit of fun. I was just interested to see whether the images from the Pen F could, could stand up to those from the medium format camera here. So just before we look at the images, just a few more caveats. You know, I, I've already mentioned that this isn't a scientific test. It's just a little bit of fun but there is obviously going to be differences in the framing of my compositions. This has a 75 millimeter f3.5 lens. It's a fixed lens on this camera. It only goes up to a shutter speed of one 300 of a second in terms of its fastest speed. And its widest aperture is f3.5. On the Pen F, the shutter speed is a little bit better. It can go up to one 500th of a second shutter speed but where this lens really performs is in its lenses like this one here is a 38 millimeter lens so it's equivalent to about 75 millimeter on a full frame camera and this particular lens has an aperture of f 1.8 so yeah so i was really interested to see whether the arguably the probably the better lens quality could help elevate the images from the half frame 35 millimeter film format up to that of a medium format film camera. So let's dive in and take a look at the images. Both cameras had film which had a similar ISO sensitivity. So I used Ilford's FP4 plus 125 in the Seagull and I also used that in the Pen F as well but I did have trouble with the Pen F in its first film so I tried another film which was another ISO 100 film but it was an expired obsolete roll of Jessup's Pan 100 which is a rebranded or so people think it's a rebranded Agfa Photo APX 100 film of yesteryear but of the two rolls that I put through the Pen F, I actually preferred the images from this Jessup's rebranded film. But anyway, so the film that you're looking at is not identical, uh, but it was a similar ISO range. So with these first images here, you can obviously see with the medium format image on the right, there's a lot less grain in the actual image. But what is really quite obvious is that the half frame image on the left is a lot sharper. So I found that really quite um, surprising. And actually this is probably one of my 
better images that I took with the Seagull camera. Again, the Seagull is on the right and the this time a much better matched composition with the Pen F on the left. So yeah, so hopefully you can probably see this. And the Obviously there's a lot more grain in the 35 millimeter image compared to that from the medium format because the negative size is that much bigger with 120 medium format film. So yeah, so in here, yeah, definitely the Seago image, even though it's not entirely sharp, it just looks a lot better, I find. And I, I did find that with the Pen F in general, it's great for kind of more near close subjects. As soon as you kind of go more to subjects which are further in the distance, the camera and the resolution that it can kind of muster up really starts to suffer. But anyway, on to the other comparisons that I've got for you today. So both of those two images you saw earlier were from a place called Montague House, which is a National Trust property here in the UK in Somerset. Again, the medium format film is on the right and the half frame 35 millimeter is on the left. And you can probably see here, I did struggle a little bit here with matching the composition but again with the medium format film you can see in the trunk here how much more detail it's managed to extract from the scene i did struggle on both of these to try and rein in the highlights in the sky and i think i've managed to do a much better job again with the medium format camera here as you would expect and yeah it's pretty sharp as well but yeah, I think I, yeah, it's a tough one, but I think I do prefer the medium format composition here. This one, this time, the medium format film camera, whether it was my fault at the time, I didn't have enough depth of field. I didn't set the aperture narrow enough to get a sharper, more of the subject in focus. But obviously you can see on the pen F here, even though it is a lot grainier, it has picked up a lot more of the detail on the actual house itself. And it's just a shame when I was there during this time that the sky was not really doing that much. So it, it's not really adding much to this particular picture. But actually the, the grain in the medium format film camera is showing up quite a lot as well. Considering, like I said earlier, this one was, this is about 12 year expired film. Whereas obviously this was a fresh Ilford FP4 plus one in 25 film. So yeah, so the Pen F didn't do too bad of a job there. The next one is off this church that I took, again, outside another National Trust property, but this time in Wiltshire, here in the UK, near to a, an estate called Dinton. And yeah, I really, even though it doesn't come across too well in the 35 millimeter, image it does a little bit here in the medium format film when when the sun actually came through it cast the shadow of the church tower onto this rooftop with its flag here the, the, the digital version obviously picks up a lot more of that detail and it's a little bit lost in film but then equally the, the flag on the penneth image here is showing a better shape so yeah, again, I feel like, again, I've probably done a much better job with the medium format, although it's just not as sharp as that of the Pen F. But it just looks a little bit more dramatic. There's more, because there's more detail to work with in the negative, you can obviously push it a lot harder before the green starts to show itself, whereas obviously the green in the half frame, 35 mil negative, is showing up quite a lot in this image. So again, yeah, 35 millimeter on the left, 120 on the right. And they're quite easily matched here. I, I actually prefer the image on the half frame camera this time, even though the, the clouds in the sky on the 120 film look a lot more dramatic. I just feel like I nailed the composition with this couple walking through the seam on through the scene on this half frame camera and I quite like as well the fact that the house is sharp a lot sharper than my seagull 
camera is, but obviously the green is, is there. And then I like the fact that I've managed to blur out the foreground, whereas obviously there's a lot more in focus in the actual boulder camera itself. And I've talked about it in another video, but it's probably not a fair representation of what a medium format folding camera is like. I've got like another one, a boulder, which arguably produces much better images, but it only does six by six, so not the half frame. 120 format as I'm showing here but, but a particular problem with my seagull and I've put up this picture before is that the lens is a little bit dirty and there's fungus growing in it so I'm not sure how much that has an impact on the quality of the images that it produces. I, I did have to work the seagull image quite hard to get the kind of the detail in the house whilst retaining that information in the, in the sky and yeah I just feel that here it just works a lot better with the medium format camera here in the landscape ratio because obviously I've cropped the house a little bit here in the half frame camera but it still does a pretty good job but yeah and again you can see that it's sharper but it just it just lacks the the, the quality of that medium format film look right so now moving back into dorset this time to shaftesbury and its famous gold hill of course so just to check for myself uh yeah so oh i just need to look at the green in the sky because obviously this is the half frame 35 millimeter and on the right is the 120 so yeah, it was a really quite a nice scene here when I caught when I captured this on both of these cameras. It, you could argue there's too much of this in the right, but the problem at the moment with Gold Hill is if you, if I'd move further around, there's a house further down the hill covered in scaffolding at the moment. So this composition nicely masks that out. But again, I really do like the medium. I like both images, but I think the medium format just edges it. it just feels like it's got a little bit more the tonality just feels a little bit more natural i guess whereas again i've probably had to push it quite hard with the pen f to get it to a similar state the jessup's expired film with the pen f on the left and the 120 medium format film on the the right from the seagull and both these were taken same day, same time, and um, yeah, I was obviously lucky with the person on the left-hand side, but you never know when the next person's going to walk past or go out, so I just had to take the shot. But yeah, I do think they're very similar compositions, and it's probably touch and go which one I prefer. I probably prefer the medium format, just because I feel that it's retained a lot more of the detail on the actual sky on the right but that's but that's the only reason i just feel that there's a lot more space up here compared to that on the pen f so i nailed the composition a little bit better but like i said because they're different focal lengths it's um it's obviously difficult to try and match the compositions and i think the last comparison i have it's not really a again. It's not really a fair comparison because I think they, even though they're of the same subject, it's obviously a very different composition that I was obviously aiming for. In that, on the half frame, I was probably just focused with the the people more, whereas obviously didn't have so much people in the right image. And yeah, I just feel the composition is a lot stronger on that white image yeah so even though the olympus pen f image is a lot sharper i do prefer the more ethereal look i think to the image on the right and i think that's probably what i'm going to conclude from this is that the pen f does produce some really really sharp images and that really helps with then producing some decent quality half frame 
images whereas obviously on the flip side i don't find at the moment whether it's to do with that problem on the lens in terms of it being dirty whether that's having an impact on the quality of the images but i just feel like in some of those comparisons i just feel that the seagull images have just got something a little bit more about them I guess, but I was really surprised actually that I that some of the Penef images did really work a lot better. But I haven't given up on the seagull, yeah. But obviously, I want to try and get that lens clean so I can see whether I can see how much that is having an impact. For, funny enough, actually, if I if I clean it and they end up coming up sharper, will will I like the images less because? I guess it just helps with that more film look in the obviously digital images are very sharp almost too sharp these days whereas film is not all about sharpness it's about character and feel and I just felt that in most of those scenarios the seagull did produce a more characterful image. Yeah, so that's all I was going to talk about on this particular subject. I'm definitely going to be using both cameras again. So yeah, so anyway, thanks for um, watching this video and um, I'll see you next time.